Hey guys, Bots and Blasters here, and today we're going to be going over some war footage uh, on the request of you guys. You guys wanted to see it, and uh, I had a player that she recorded some footage, and it, it wasn't the best, it was windy, I will admit that, but thankful to her for getting the footage. It's always helpful when you have somebody in your Nerf club or Nerf community that is willing just to help out with general filming as well as watching equipment and so forth. Now, I'll try to leave in as much of the audio as I can, but it was pretty windy. I'll probably put some music over it so you guys can be hearing the music as well, just so this way it's not total awkward silence. I'll give a brief little explanation as far as what's going on in each game. So basically the way our games work is you get hit once anywhere, you're tagged out, you have to go back to respawn. We normally have a designated space for respawning, unless it's a particular game type, such as capture the flag or what have you. But generally, it, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we do have blaster tags count. We have had problems in the past with people using extra large blasters to block shots. And basically, that's what shields are for. So we do allow shields at our wars. Uh, shields, you can only use them if you're using a secondary or like basically like a sidearm with a shield that's allowable. Uh, shields are also pierced by mega rounds and they are completely destroyed as and shattered for the entire rest of that game by a mega XL or demolisher rocket. But none of that's available at the field at the moment. So essentially what you guys are seeing right now is a warm up round that we call pistols only or sidearms only where essentially you go on the field with with one single like pistol or sidearm equivalent. So you can start with one full cylinder of ammo plus a handful of ammo. We, we kind of just keep it loose and lazy because we're trying to essentially get the body warmed up and so forth. And I also want to point out it was very cold today so we had a lot of people <laughs> kind of call and be like, hey, we're not going to make it today. And I'm like, guys, it's only 60 degrees. So for this particular match, I'm running my modded uh, gold reflex six. It works really well. I can pretty much tag anybody I'm pointing at unless you know wind intervenes in some way shape or form of course as you guys can see we do public play in parks so we have to be more mindful of the colors and the type of blasters we use in public um, I'm also very outspoken against you know real steel looking blasters for obvious reasons so essentially we're just playing around this jungle gym today as well as some of the surrounding trees it's not our normal play area in this park our normal play area was currently occupied so you know you want to be a good representation of nerf foam fleeing hobby especially to the your general local community so don't be an asshole and just like be like hey you know they're using that area cool we'll use this area over here and it just happens i mean you have to be respectful, you have to be tolerant, and most importantly, remind yourself as well as others, you guys are just there to have fun. Now, if I haven't said it before, for this particular game, essentially, we only have five lives, you get tagged out, uh, you go tap back in, respawn immediately, and once your five lives are out, you're out. And pretty much, I'm going to get tagged out real quick, because everyone knows <laughs> that I have a specialty modded blasters, so they kind of team up on me. And as good as you are... You can't physically take on multiple people plinking at you at once. It's just impossible. <laughs> but it's all for fun, you know. That's what you should be doing when you're flinging foam. You should be having fun. I am currently working at the moment to get, you know, a GoPro or headset. But I, I do kind of like this uh, battle footage from essentially somebody else's perspective. It gives you more of a view as far as what's actually going on in the field and just what I might be doing. <laughs> I think for this particular match, my girlfriend was using my uh, big 501 uh, pistol revolver <laughs> that I got from Big Power Electric. She loved it. She loved it very much. So I think I might have lost that blaster. <laughs> no, but it's cool. It's a good blaster. I, I do not doubt it at all, especially if you've seen what uh, my buddy Maritime has done to his. I'll go ahead and put a link to him over here on the right. You guys can check him out. Oh my god, the stuff he's done to his 501, it makes me drool with jealousy. But in a good way, in a good way. <laughs> so right here, I've already been tagged out. Like I said, they all gang up on me. <laughs> they all tag me out pretty much as soon as I call live and I run back on the field. Like, I I'm tagged out <laughs> almost right away. I if not by my girlfriend with my slightly modded 501, <laughs> by... <laughs> Everybody else just trying to quickly like rush me. 
I think about this time anyways the match is almost over people are getting kind of tagged out with everything that's been going on and uh, you know I've been taking a few of them with me too you know I didn't go out without a fight <laughs> uh, but it was just very windy that day and if you ever nerfed uh, outside publicly when it's windy I mean it was bad enough when we only used to use elite darts when we used to use gen 3 kush darts we got a lot better accuracy but the wind would still toss them all over the place so of course wobble head darts are pretty much what I use standard for my club I bring out like a bin of like a thousand wobble head darts as well as watermelon darts and just let whoever tear at it within reason of course we have certain restrictions as far as how many mags can fill up and whatever because obviously the more ammo somebody takes on the field the longer it takes for dart sweeps however we don't restrict somebody so for example if you wanted to run rival and at the moment the club doesn't have any rival rounds but you want to bring out your own more power to you if you wanted to run vortex or nitro <laughs> then by all means more power to you um, the only thing of course is you have to scavenge your own ammo now we all do a community dart sweep everybody or ammo sweep in that case so of course like if you're only using vortex for example somebody else will pick up your rounds but they'll give them to you back at the dart bin when we're essentially dumping everything in and counting make sure we got a good return on what we sent out there <laughs> Because essentially, if you're shooting off 10 darts and you're bringing back 8, that's a decent return. But when you have more people on the field doing more sweeps, it uh, definitely helps. Definitely helps a lot. For our November War, which is the footage that you're watching right now, I did have a fan come out and meet me who lives kind of relatively close to me in the area. Uh, it's still a bit of a drive for him, but he wanted to come out and meet me and hang out. And I actually helped him mod a Night Finder as well as a couple of other things. So Manny, hey, if you're watching the footage, man, nice to have you out there. I hope you at some more wars in the future hopefully with more people when it's not windy so I can set up more cover <laughs> so the next match we're going into is essentially a variation of uh, team matches but uh, we call it mercenary rounds so whenever we have an odd number of players one person or a group of people can sit out and elect to be mercenaries now usually you don't get to choose to be a mercenary you're just like chosen at random to be one to help balance things but essentially what a mercenary is is if a team already has for example three another team has three and there's the odd man out the odd man out starts as a mercenary so how it works is they will start on one team and then the moment they are tagged out they will jump and switch to the other person's team now they still have the same five lives that everybody else does, but they're kind of going back and forth between the teams. So when you throw in more MacGuffins like first aid kits or med packs or whatever it is that your game or club might introduce, um, you can keep a mercenary around for a while. Um, in this particular case though, uh, we didn't have those in play. It was just very quick, very simple. Uh, people are already starting to warm up because the body's getting heated, so we start taking off jackets in a bit. And this starts looking a bit more like a nerf war. <laughs> Okay, so right here I had already been tagged out, so I joined the other person's team. I was playing the mercenary right now, and I was using my heavily modified raptor strike. Most people would be like, why would you modify a raptor strike? Well, for aesthetics. I like the way it looks, I like the way it feels, the way it was painted up. It was for a LARP, a post-apocalyptic LARP, and I still have a great fondness for it because I really liked how the custom paint job came out. It's actually sporting an 8 kilogram spring, not the best or the strongest I could put in there, but definitely what I was comfortable taking uh, to a public war. And as you can see, still bright colors, still orange tip on it, uh, everything else though, very wasteland aesthetic. I might do a look at it because it is a very special mod to me, but uh, that might be something that I'll put up in a poll on my community tab in the future. Now one of my other players, uh, Vash here, he's using a uh, Centurion. He really likes the Centurion. He's a big fan of it for some reason. And I don't fault him for it, I just let him know, hey, there's a lot of problems with it. But he loves it, he loves that emotional, uh, big sniper rifle feel, so hey, he rocks it. I can easily keep him at distance though and at pace with uh, my 8 kilogram uh, Raptor Strike, which I have dubbed the AP. AP for Asset Protector, or Asset Protection. Uh, has to do with the character that I played way back when in that post-apocalyptic LARP. But, that's off topic. Back to the nerf war at hand. 
My girlfriend is actually running a stock Rex Rampage that she has plans to mod in the near future. She's actually been watching a lot of videos and doing a lot of research on her own as far as how to mod it. So she's pretty excited to get into that. I actually gave her an old Strife so this way she could practice uh, modding and getting it all up and going. And of course, uh, it's going to be her first time soldering stuff. So I'm going to help her, but not be directly in the way while she's doing stuff because it's important that you learn how to do this stuff on your own but that might be a video for another time too let me know if you guys would want to see that <laughs> one important thing to put out there especially in regards to mercenary type games is announce when you're tagged uh, that you're changing teams just be like team change or change team or what have you just so this way other players can know hey mercenary is changing sides uh, even then most of the time sometimes most people don't pay attention that's fine but you gave them a courtesy if nothing else it helps uh, cut down on the confusion that might transpire the only drawback I've ever seen to play a mercenary in one of these game types is if you're a very good player, or at the very least you have very good equipment, people go out of their way to tag you. Uh, like they'll gang up on you <laughs> because they want you on their side. So usually if you're a mercenary, you'll be one of the first ones to be tagged out unless you're running a shield or something else. But that's besides the point. I personally don't like running shields at a nerf war. I might do one in the future just for the shits and giggles. But I really don't like running them. I think it's kind of like scummy, honestly. But I don't hate on people that do do that. We do allow people to bring melee weapons to our uh, nerf wars though. For example, anything made by nerf, 100% is allowed on the field. That includes the old end strike stuff, that includes the alien menace line, some of the, some of the zombie strike stuff too. Uh, pretty much anything that was officially made by nerf, of course we check it to make sure the foam's not separating or ripping. We do not allow boffer weapons though. We want to make very distinct separation between us and LARPers. So we, when we're out here, we're not LARPing. We're uh, playing nerf, <laughs> as you can see. Um, we also allow like the Adventure Force swords and stuff like that too. Those are fine. And we also allow uh, the latex weapons too. But in regards to us using melee weapons, you don't have to super swing at somebody. You just have to gently tap them to make the contact, to make the tag, and that's all that's required. And actually, if you do end up hitting too hard, uh, you can have your privileges to use a melee weapon revoked. Usually, it's only short term until people learn how to control themselves. But uh, yeah, just something I wanted to point out. Um, I had actually brought a melee weapon, but I forgot to bring it on the field. <laughs> that's why it popped in my head. So right here we had a little dispute over a tag as far as who was tagged and who wasn't tagged. General rule we have is if somebody calls a tag on you, just take it because it's not worth arguing. If you get in an argument, it just kind of destroys the fun for everybody. Uh, regardless of whether you got tagged or not is irrelevant. Uh, when there's windy conditions like this, or just in general, if you're wearing a lot of gear, it's happened to me uh, when I used to run my chest rig. You get tagged and... You just don't feel it, but somebody says, hey, I tag. Just be like, cool, you got me. Put your blaster over your head or your hands up like you surrender and then just go back to your respawn. There is no need to complain and make a big thing about it, trust me. Generally, though, all our players are really good sports. I've only had a couple of issues here or there, like I said before, that we've had to address. But I feel it's important as an event organizer that you address this stuff when it happens and you put a stop to it. So this way, it doesn't become a bad habit that new players will pick up on as they come out to wars and then essentially you have a whole group of players that just don't call their shots and it can lead to the whole group just kind of falling apart here guys uh we're essentially starting dark cleanup so i'm gonna go ahead and fade to black and yeah that was pretty much our event we did a couple more games our player sadly didn't record them she had to go but i'm still very grateful for the footage we did get i'll be working on improving these videos to make them uh, more interesting more engaging especially once i get the gopro i kind of want to do some really fun stuff with that i have some cool things in mind for that <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully it was enlightening. More importantly, hopefully it was enjoyable. Uh, once again, this is the Mid Valley Nerf Club. We are located in the Wesleyco, McAllen, Alamo, Texas areas. If you guys want to look us up, uh, we're not opposed to traveling other places and you know meeting up with other players and just having a good time. But I'm Bots and Blasters, and once again, I hope to see you guys next time on the battlefield.